This tutorial is about calibration and pre-processing of astro images and we'll be using the following procedure. We'll check for bad frames, we'll calibrate, register, normalize, reject bad data, combine, and do a DDP. Then we'll save for Photoshop. It's very critical to check your data, all the individual frames for bad data which means that you cycle through each stack before you calibrate and exclude data that are bad. For example, this H-alpha image looks perfect. It's a usable frame. However, if you move down a couple of frames, you'll see that there's a double star image. Something got bumped, something got moved, and it recorded a double image of the entire object, which means we have to reject this frame. Similarly, and it appears that this image started before the mount had a chance to stop slewing. So we want to reject this as well. Calibration. All of our frames appear to be good. We've thrown out the frames that are bad. Now what we want to do is we want to dark subtract our light frames and we want to correct them for any sort of fall off at the edges with flat frames. So we will calibrate by selecting a dark frame, typically one that matches the same exposure as our light frame, in this case 1200 seconds, and we do not use any sort of scaling. We have a blue, this happens to be a blue image, blue filtered frame, we're going to be using a blue flat. We'll be subtracting a bias, a pedestal, from the flat. And in this case, we are using a, a bias frame, a zero time a dark second frame. However, that is really only required if you do a time scaled calibration, meaning that your dark frame has a different exposure than your light frame. Otherwise, this really isn't necessary. But in this case, just for showing you all three different types of frames, the dark, the light, and the bias, we're showing that to you here. This happens to be the flat field for the blue filter. And we click on calibrate. It calibrates all the frames in the stack. You should see the, the darker edges around the corner equalized to the rest of the background because we're flat fielding that. Everything should look good at this point. Registration. There's a very nice registration program within CCD Stack, which is the program I'm using here. You click register. This little add-in that says from CCD Inspector called Star Matching Pattern. Use High Precision, click All. You can see that the frame that's selected here is the reference and the next frame are not quite aligned. You click Align All and then you'll see that all the, the images are aligned. It used 271 stars. The RMS error is very low. Once you get below about 0.03, it's very low and you can see, at least in these two frames that it overlaid, the stars line up. Next thing you do is click Apply up here. Use a bicubic B spline, which is a typical way of uh, doing a final registration, and click. And now all the frames are registered, which means all the stars are superimposed on a pixel level basis. One of the nice things you can do in CCD Stack is double click a star, and you can see the full width half max of that star for all of the images in the stack. So that if you had one image that just happened to be taken at the time of bad seeing, and this number's more like seven or eight, you might want to delete that frame as not being uh, particularly good. So you don't want to have bad data impacting all the good data that you have. The next thing you want to do is normalize. And what that does is it takes out the effects of different brightness. For example, let's say the moon started coming up and the last few blue frames are lighter than the rest of them. So here we go into CCD stack, we go under normalize, control, both, and you select an area in the background. This is a background here. You click OK. You select the area of your object, a highlight area. You click OK. And then what it does is it normalizes all the frames. They shouldn't be that much different if you didn't have any big changes in moonlight. And you can see all these numbers are around 1. That's the scale factor. Everything looks good so far. Now data rejection. We could spend an entire hour on this, but we're going to go through it just very quickly to give you an overview. Go under CCD Stack, we go under Data Reject, Procedures. If you have enough frames, you'll be using some type of signal reject. In CCD Stack, if you have less than about 8 to 10 frames, use another type, a more aggressive type called Poisson Rejection. But what we're going to do is we're going to end up marking all of the bad pixels, the cosmic ray hits, uh, the hot pixels, 
which should not be the same in the different images because you've probably dithered your images, slightly moved the images from frame to frame when you captured them. And you can see that very closely here. We've gone through our Sigma Reject. If you look in this, there's a hot pixel there, a bad point. It's been marked in red. It will not be included when we combine. If you go to the next frame, it's gone. I'm going to go back and forth a couple of times, and you can see that. Now that all of the bad data are rejected, you can simply finish it and then combine. In combine, we're generally going to use a mean combine, so we go under CCD stack, combine, we'll use mean. Remember, all of those red pixels are still marked so that when they're added up here, those data will not be used, and that's what we get here. It's completed. Uh, we've created a new image from all of these blue frames called the mean blue of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 20 minute exposures and then we're pretty much done except we want to save it. You save the data, this, it'll be saved as a floating point 32 bit and we'll call it mean blue 15 times 20 minutes or whatever the number of exposures there are and you're done. And then what you should be left with at the end of this procedure is a master luminance, a master red, green, and blue which we'll be working with in the next tutorial.